My thanks to charleslouis.co.uk Chartered Mortgage Advisors for their support in this video. Trevor Morley was a striker whose city signed from Northampton in the late 80s. Best remembered probably for scoring the equaliser in the two-all draw at Bradford City when City were promoted towards the end of the 80s. Also, he scored one of the goals in the 5-1 victory against Manchester United. Um, often people think of the Andy Hinchcliffe goal or Paul Lake's contribution, but Trevor Morley scored in that game as well. Uh, he was a character, uh, and as you'll find out in this interview, he has lots of different stories and memories from his time at Manchester City, or even when he went to West Ham, which is probably where he's best remembered from, a teammate of Ian Bishop, another former City player who played at West Ham. I spoke to Trevor recently, he's based these days in Norway, as I started the interview by saying, he's based in Scandinavia. I love it when people say Scandinavia because they don't know which country they live in, they're, they're guessing, is it Sweden, is it Finland, is it Norway? I often say I live in Norway and people say, oh, you live in Scandinavia. It's like the Americans, you say I live in, you live in Europe. But no, 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 I, I've been living in Norway for 20 years now. Wow. Can you speak so, the lingo um, then? I presume you can. Yes. Do you want me, I can snock a little Norse today, which do will. Yeah, I snock a Norse. I speak Norwegian, but uh, I don't like to. I like to speak uh, English. I really, um, I got remarried. 20 years ago, and um, Norwegian girl, so I got stuck here. <laughs> how's, uh, how's it been up there? I mean, obviously, we've seen about Sweden's uh, lockdown being a lot looser than it is in Britain. Are you back working again? Are you able to, to get out there on the training pitch, that sort of thing? I'll just get you again. That was Sweden, not Norway. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm comparing no, Sweden and Norway. Are they, are they the same? No, Sweden was uh, had a quite an open um, idea about the Corona thing, but Norway's been it. We've been really lucky. I think it's been really good and a little bit lucky. If you think that Norway is actually about three and a half times bigger than England. Now, if you think there's five million people in Norway and what sixty million in England, then that Corona is going to spread round. But I live in a place called Bergen. Have you been to Bergen? Oh no, I would like to go there sometime. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, right on the sea, a lot of cruise ships coming here. And that's the size of, uh, I guess, Nottingham, where I'm from, about 350,000 people. And I think we've had about 250 deaths, deaths in the whole of Norway. That's how good it's been. Um, you always got like zero room now. for social distancing then, haven't you? You know what, we never closed down like you. I think we, we maybe it was a little bit earlier... But we, we actually kept cafes and some some sort of alcohol places were open with a bit of distance. Where well, I spoke to my sister in Nottingham and said, you couldn't go and get a coffee, you couldn't get anything in England. So, um, yeah, it's been good. It's been pretty good. But, you know, everyone's read in that spike. So how do you look back on your time at Manchester City? Because... You are a, a much-loved former player, I would suggest, particularly because you scored that goal at Bradford that day, which um, <laughs> is still highly significant. Um, how do you look back on your time at City? It was a great time. I loved it. I mean, it was a bit up and down for me. Um, you know, I'd gone from Derby County, the 16-year-old, to Corby Town, and then Nuneatonborough and Northampton Town. I, I never thought I'd... You know, it was a hard route to the top. So to sign for City at 24, 25 years old, um, a big club like that. It was a couple of weeks after Watford was supposed to sign me. I don't know if you heard the story. They, uh, Dave Bassett uh, uh, was going to sign me and um, they were actually in the first division then. And they offered me a lot more money than Man City did when I got to Man City with the, uh, what's his name? Who did I do the contract talks with? Jimmy? Jimmy Frizzell. Jimmy Frizzell, yeah. So it was hard work. But anyway, it was a funny story because my Watford deal fell through because uh, they were playing the FA Cup on the Saturday. And 
I played for Northampton in the cup ties earlier, so I was actually cup tied. So Northampton said to Watford, he's okay, he plays one more league game for us because he can't play for you in the FA Cup anyway. So Harry Bassett went, yeah, it's okay, we can do that. So, of course, I think Watford drew 1-1 at home with some non-league team. And on the Monday morning, I've got my suit on and Harry Bassett's rang me up and said, Trevor, I said, I'm on, I said, I'm on the way up now. He said, I've just been fired. I said, what? <laughs> I've just been fired. So, I went, okay. And I rang, I spoke to Graham Carr, Northampton, said the deal's off. So, I was on a down. You can imagine I've been six, seven years waiting to get to the, trying to get to the top. And then, but the good thing was, two weeks later, Mel Machen and Man City came in. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't realise how big a club Man City was. I, I'm, a, I'm a Nottingham Forest fan. My dad played for Nottingham Forest. I watched Forest from a four-year-old. I watched Cluffy. I was there when we won the European and everything. And, and the funny story was, there was a few clubs interested and they said to me, so we get yourself up to Man City now. We wanted to have some, some talks with you. I said, but do not tell anyone. Don't tell that. Not like it was a massive deal, but, but they said, you know, don't keep it quiet. Don't tell anybody. Okay. So they got to Man City and was in, we'd been there about half an hour, 45 minutes, and the press were ringing. And um, there were a couple of people turned outside about me having a transfer. And Jimmy Frizzle now said, well, what have you, you've told people, haven't you? I went, I ain't told anybody, I swear to you. I looked out the window and I'd come up in a sponsored car. I had this red uh, Ford Escort sponsored car at Northampton. He said, a red one with big white letters on the side, Trevor Morley, captain of Northampton Town. <laughs> and I parked it right outside Main Road like an idiot, you know what I mean? So I was thinking, like, maybe City dropped the deal because they might think I'm stupid. But, um, yeah, I mean, my time... It was a bit of a difficult start for me. I'll be honest with you, the crowd were really getting my back for a couple of months because Paul Molden wasn't, he was a crowd favourite and I sometimes played in front of him. The poor Stewart had left, wasn't scoring that many goals. I had a tough time and I can remember, you know, playing in front of 30,000 people and they boo you sometimes or if you give the ball away, there'll be a boo around the stadium and that. That local man, Manchester paper used to like slave me, kill me sometimes. How the hell is he playing with them? But, um, you know, I gave it everything. And I put a shift in, I put my tackles in like I did. And um, I turned it around. I got, got some goals. I ends up, in a way, I became not, say, a favourite, but, you know, they, um, they really like me. And I think they see that I put the work in and, and of course, the crucial goal against Bradford was uh, something I'll never forget. Quite surreal, because if you watch it, and if you, if you play that goal, it's a great goal, it's a great move. And I had a few chances that day, but the story was great. Palace went in and the late goal for me. If you watch that goal, there's one thing. What sticks out? Is there anything that sticks out there? Bravery. Was this, is the first thing that drops to my mind when you scored yeah. that goal. Yeah, go on. It's not that one. Well, there was a. It was a great build-up, as you talk about as well. Yeah. It, was, it was obviously it was the goal that got City promoted. Keep which, going. Uh, which go on, <laughs> go on. You've obviously got something in mind. I can't think of. Well, I guess in all my career, that was probably the most important goal ever scored. They talk about a million, I remember at the time, a million pound goal. It's now like, you know, Forrest get up, it's like 180 million, whatever. But it was a big goal. If you look at it, I score, and I go to the City fans behind the goal with bananas, and I peel round. Not one player came to celebrate with me. And I thought I was offside. And if you see it, I've sort of had a look, at look. I'm looking around the linesman and the referee thinking, is this a goal or what? Because no one's celebrating. And if you watch it, I used to run back to the halfway line. And I don't know why to this day. I think it was maybe in, I, I, that maybe the, the players didn't like me. But it wasn't that. It, maybe it was just nerves or whatever. But, you know, we knew we got one goal. We still had to hang on. But oh, the funny thing was, it was the most important goal in my career. Not one of my teammates came to celebrate. you think we'd have a... You know, nowadays, you'd pile up in the corner. So... Um, but of course, that was a great memory. And then to play in the top division, of course, the um, 
the Liverpool game. You know, for me, 25 year old from non league. All the way, I've actually gone six, five, four, three, two, one. First game to play against Liverpool, which was, as we know, the the last team before this one to win to win the Premier or oh, well, to win the first division as it was then. And I don't know if you heard this story. It's a true story. Have you got time for this? Absolutely. So um, we're playing Man City and, uh, and we're playing Liverpool, of course, and we've got a very young side. And I'm actually about the third oldest player in the team at 25. And I've got no experience. So you can imagine now. And we were messing around before the game, like shaking all Rush, Barnes, Beardsley, whatever. Anyway, 10 minutes before half time, I've got some new Umbro boots. First time I've been sponsored in my life. And the sole of a boot start coming off. It's flapping. So I've shouted to the bench, Mel no Machin and um, John, uh, John, John, John Dean, of course. My boot, my boot, the sole's come off a boot. Six minutes to half time. And when we get the free kick, if you look at the highlights of this, when we get the free kick, when we score the equaliser, I'm actually putting on a new boot. They throw on a boot for me. Now, they throw me on the wrong boot. They throw on the boot to Andy Hinchcliffe. So There's about eight minutes for half time, and I'm shouting to Dundee, it's the wrong fucking boot. And he's put your foot in it. So I'm, I was like size nine. It's a size seven. Andy Hinchcliffe had like women's feet. So I've, I've, I can't, you know, I've, I've wedged my toes in. So play for a few minutes. I can't feel my leg. My leg, there's no blood going through my leg. I can't feel my foot. I'm shouting to the bench. They're going two minutes, a minute, you know. And you can see that. And Bish sent me the actual picture of it. Right on half time, I've not made Alan Hansen. And I'm through one-on-one -on -one with Grubbler. Now, the problem is, I can't feel my leg. And I know I'm going to mess up. Not only am I through one-on-one -on -one in front, uh, in front uh, against Grubbler, so it's my first game ever at Anfield against Liverpool. I'm one on one. I've not made Gallon's Hansen in front of the cop, and the referee blows for half time. And I ran to the ref. I remember saying, "You," f and he went, "Trevor, I think I did you a favour, son." And it's a true story. <laughs> you can Google that. I was actually, and we could have maybe won that game. I was a bit of an angle, but I was. And it was not very often the referees blew for half time. So that was a surreal memory to play against Liverpool, but it was a great experience. And then of course, the, we, know, we know we're going to talk about the Man United game, which is a massive memory. A great day. And to score in that game was, uh, was something special. So... Yeah, I, it, it all came to an end too quickly for me because I felt like I loved Manchester, I loved the supporters. We had some great young players. Um, Howard came in. And I think Howard actually liked me. He, I think Howard, he liked me. He played me in those couple of games and uh, in front of Clive Allen. And, um, but, you know, he wanted to make changes and bring Wardy in. And... Uh, he did. I won't say he didn't like Bish, but he, <laughs> I can remember his, training, his first training session. He gave everyone bibs and he didn't give one to Bish, Bish, and he gave it to Gary Megson. And uh, I remember, I always remember him saying, Don't read anything into this. And obviously, he dropped Bish first. I think he dropped him the first game. So, and he'd been with him at Everton. So, of course, me and Bish were best mates. So, um, Howard had wanted to get Ward in. You know, we left and that was it. It was. I did. I felt my, my time was cut short because I loved this club. I loved um, the supporters. I think we had a good young team um, in playing the top division. I just found my feet, and but that's it. That's football. And suddenly I'm at West Ham. You're a you're an absolute um, uh, character, I think that the word is, and just the way you've been speaking endears you to anybody that I'm sure is listening to this. Um, the most notorious thing that people talk about when they talk about you, apart from the goal and everything like that, was you've been involved in a stabbing incident. What was the truth behind that? Were you involved in something like that? Yeah, well, my wife stabbed me, my first wife. Um... Basically, she was psychopath, really. 
she's a crazy woman and um, the stuff of course Bish is involved with this <laughs> me and Bish was, surprise uh, me. <laughs> got into a bit of trouble I won't tell the exact story but anyway um, ends up that uh, I had a fight with her not a fight but she started attacking me and I used to keep a knife in my drawer at the side of my bed and she threw the drawer she threw this cabinet at me and the knife fell out and then she go to stab me and it's it's not easy to stop someone stabbing you funny enough because I actually stopped the first couple one it went in my arm the first one and then it went through into my side and um I mean I'd been drinking it the funny thing it didn't hurt but the blood started spraying out and I thought maybe I'm gonna die here and and I ran I ran to my neighbour it was like two thirty in the morning just outside London he was a from Croatia, a great guy, and he was laughing because just had my shorts on. He went, Trevor, what's up? I went, I've been stabbed, and the blood was coming out. And then I collapsed. I didn't remember anything else. So, um, yeah, it's a true story. I lost four and a half pints of blood, very close to dying. Um, and uh, next thing I woke up, 6.30 in the morning, Billy Bonds was there, and the people from West Ham, and, yeah, I was just glad to be alive. But it's a true story, and, of course... The rumours that followed that because the newspapers were on to me like crazy and I was living on my own and just outside London and the Sunday newspapers especially was like, oh, we know your wife found you in bed with another girl and blah, blah, blah. And my lawyer said, don't make a comment. Do not make a comment. Because you make a comment, you'll be in the newspaper. There was no comment, no comment. And this went on. So eventually they were saying, uh, we, we've heard your wife found you in bed with another man. And I was like, I wanted to punch the guy, you know, but I was like, no comment. And then eventually said, oh, we've heard you've been caught in bed with Ian Bishop. And where that come story come from, I don't know. Uh, maybe it was her that said the story to try and justify it. We also know an ex-player that didn't like Bish. I'm not going to mention his name. Played for a few big clubs, may have started the rumour, but... The amazing thing was, this never, it never went in the newspaper. By word of mouth, in two days, when this story, well, when people start talking, it went from London to Nottingham. My sister rang me and said, what's, I said, the same was in bed with the ambition. <laughs> and we were laughing, you know, at first. And we thought it was funny until, you know, we walked in the pub and, <laughs> and we were nearly fighting with people. And then we started playing again and we got the gay songs. So it was a tough time. I was drinking for most of the season that season. Bish took it a bit better than me, but, you know, and I actually, <laughs> there's some funny stories. I actually lived with Bish and his wife for a while because, you know, I was on my own. And uh, there was one, I think it was a Saturday morning, and his wife went down to make a cup of tea and said, I'll bring the papers up. And I got in bed with Bish, sat there re reading the newspapers, and the fucking window cleaning, well, I can't, I can't swear, sorry. The window cleaner suddenly has appeared at the window, looked through the window and seen me and Bish in a double bed, sitting, lying, reading the Sunday papers, which was uh, funny, really. So so we, we, we're we cool with it now. We laugh about it. but And it was tough for a time because, you know, played at Old Trafford when they were singing songs about us for 20 minutes. And, yeah, and Bish actually dropped his shorts to the Stratford end, which I said to Bish, that wasn't your best move. He showed his arse to the Stratford end. Now I that that wasn't a good move. But so we're, we're best, best mates. We're we're, we're still best mates, and um, of course we was at Man City together. And for my deal, I mean, okay, I was a bit older, but to get rid of Bish, he was a fantastic player. And um, I think that I have to say, I think West, I've not been big headed. I think West Ham got a better deal than Man City did. I love Wardy, and Wardy's a good player, but I think me and Bish for that, yeah. So, yeah, it's true, I got stabbed. And I, for one, loved your time at City. Loved mm. Dean Bishop, of course, who I bump into from time to time. Great, great memories. My thanks to Hot Click Marketing, who are specialists in online marketing. See the number and the website on the advert. Thanks for your continued support.